Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting game, uh, also from the Dos Hermanas tournament of 1996, Vladimir Kramnik versus Vishwanathan Anand, uh, and um, uh, I, I said in the previous video that Kasparov and Anand both finished half a point behind of uh, uh, Topalov and uh, Kramnik, so uh, I thought we, we should best explore a couple of more games. And this one, uh, it really features everything, and it features a game style from Kramnik that you would not expect um, uh, for, from a modern Kramnik, uh, but you Know, like in the previous game and like in the game against Kasparov if you haven't seen them first two links in the description below really really awesome games uh, this one uh, features not only that but also uh, incredibly precise play as it took um, uh, over 100 moves for this game to finish so let's check it out uh, Kramnik with the white pieces opens with knight to f3 Anand replies with pawn to g6 the uh, sort of the fianchetto variation uh, d4 we have knight to f6 and now pawn to c4 transposing into the king's indian defense bishop to g7 uh, and now knight to c3 we have pawn to d5 transposing into the grunfeld defense uh, C captures, knight captures, and pawn to e4. So this is all very standard stuff. Even in those days, knight captures, b captures, and now pawn to c5. In the spirit of the Grunfeld, even today, this is the, considered the strongest move. The rook is on a1, so of course, um, it makes even more sense to attack the center. Uh, rook to b1, we have castles, and now bishop to e2. C captures on d4, c captures, and queen to a5. Uh, sorry, queen to a5 with check. Uh, bishop to d2, blocking check, and now queen captures on a2. And now if you count the material, uh, you can see that uh, black is up a pawn, Anand is up a pawn, uh, but it's a very well-known line, and white very happily goes into this. But uh, it looks, it just looks very scary. I mean, you have the uh, the a to b pawn, our, our pawns are connected. Uh, why would you go into something like this? Well, uh, castles, we have bishop to g4, uh, and now bishop to g5, putting pressure on the e7 pawn, but just pawn to h6. Anand doesn't care about the e7 pawn, because then he gets to play rook to e8, and he will also put pressure on the white center. So here, bishop back to e3, and now knight to c6, uh, giving up the b7 pawn, that's not really an issue. Uh, it's uh, been decided many times that this was uh, best, you know, just a continued development. Pawn to d5 and now knight to a5. Interestingly, two years after this game, uh, uh, Gary Kasparov will have this exact same position against Kramnik with the black piece. Only Kasparov will uh, shift the knight over to e5. Their game ended in a draw. Uh, so uh, let's see how Ananda does with knight to a5. And it's a very natural square for the knight in the Grunfeld. Uh, we have uh, bishop to c5 now, putting pressure on the e7 pawn once again. And now bishop to f6. Defending here. Uh, pawn to e5, this is a beautiful move by Kramnik, uh, uh, getting uh, more control over the a1 square, so now if you don't take the pawn, just rook to a1 and your knight is in trouble. So the pawn has to be captured, bishop captures on e5, but again, uh, what was the point? If knight captures, isn't the bishop here just hanging? Well, the point was rook to b4. And now Kramnik, even though he's down two pawns, uh, look at this, he's threatening the bishop, he's threatening rook to a4 to go after the, the, the knight and the queen. What can you do here? Well, first things first, we have to eliminate one of the attackers. Bishop captures on f3, bishop captures, and now rook a to e8. Again, uh, this has all been played before, <laughs> nothing new here. Uh, bishop to e3. Uh, if you if you play rook to a4 right away, it's not as impressive because uh, at best if I just show it. If rook to a4, queen to b3 offers a queen trade, rook captures on a5, wins the knight, but now you play queen captures on d1, and after rook captures on d1, there's b6, and now you win your piece back. Or you go for something like d6, trying to trap the rook on f8, but then e captures on d6, and you have to give up the piece somehow. Captures, captures, let's say rook to a4, and it is black who will uh, be pushing this for a win, as black is uh, up material. So instead, after rook a8, we have bishop back to e3, so you don't have that b6 move with a double attack at the end of the line. Uh, but now knight to c4. We have bishop captures on h6, going after the rook, and knight to d6. This is the only move. Uh, of course, if you try bishop to g7, then uh, yeah, you will blunder a piece with queen to d4 check, then uh, wins the knight. So instead, after bishop captures on h6, we have knight to d6, only move for Anand, uh, and now bishop captures on f8. Uh, the position also has been reached in 2001. Uh, Boris Gelfand had it with the white pieces, and he continued with pawn to h4 here. 
there. Uh, interestingly, okay, even in 2001, the engines wasn't weren't really impressive. Uh, but um, yeah, the engine says okay, Ponte H4 is fine, but the move uh, uh, Kramnik played is the the strongest move. So okay, Bishop captures on F8, and now there is a game where King captures on F8 was played, but here we have Rook captures, and it is now as of move 22 that this position has never been reached again. Uh, so let's see how uh, how uh, Kramnik continues this. Now, you could go for rook to a4, and it's a move that pretty much everyone would go for. You attack the queen and you win the a7 pawn, but he wants to uh, make, uh, you know, uh, the position count. He plays pawn to h4, and he wants to go after the black king. Okay, rook to c8. Now, you can't go a5 because rook a4 again will attack the queen and the pawn, but b5... Uh, it is very interesting. Now, if pawn to h5, pawn to g5, and now you continue pushing on the queen side. Also, something to consider uh, for Anand here. But okay, he went rook to c8. He wants to get his rook into the attack. And now, bishop to e4, uh, putting more pressure on black's king side. And now, queen to e5. You could also eliminate the, the bishop here, but that's just... Uh, uh, much better for, for Kramnik, uh, as after bishop to d6 uh, happens, then pawn to h5, and the white just breaks through. So instead, queen to a5 was played, putting pressure on the rook, and now rook to a4, attacking the queen, queen b5, uh, and now again h5 is very strong, but we have queen uh, bishop back to b1, uh, trying to get... Uh, uh, the attack going against that g6 pawn, and you don't want knight captures on e4 happening now that your bishop uh, is uh, very strong. So here we have rook to c5, stronger for Anand would have been rook to c4, offering a rook trade. He went for rook to c5, going after the d5 pawn, but now bishop to d3, attacks the queen, and once the queen moves, just rook captures on a7. So finally, uh, Vladimir does uh, go after this pawn. Rook captures on d5, uh, which is possible, of course, there is no check to pick up the rook due to the g6 push. Uh, and now rook to a8 with check. Also very nice would be queen to f3. It's just very, very annoying putting pressure on the position uh, on the rook if the rook moves also on b7. H, h5 is coming. So queen to f3, not a bad idea. But he went for rook to a8 with check, king to g7, and now the immediate pawn to h5. Okay, rook to d4, the rook is nicely protected here, and now we have queen to e2. Uh, just getting uh, out of the out of the rook here. Uh, qu bishop back to f6, and now h captures on g6. Finally, the capture happens, and now bishop back to b1. Uh, queen to g4. Uh, interestingly, both of my phones started listening to me at the same time. Must have been some word that I said. <laughs> Uh, but okay, queen g4, uh, and now queen to a2. Now again, you could trade here just, uh, let's say you trade here, captures, captures, and you play pawn to g3. Uh, it is possible. You, you're up the exchange. It, it is white who will be playing for the win here. But Kramnik doesn't want to trade queens. He plays queen to a8. He wants to go for a mating attack. Uh, okay, knight to c4, stopping the queen. We have queen to b3, putting pressure on b7, and now pawn to b5. Very nicely done by Anand. Uh, point is that if you play rook captures on b5, which seems like something you should be able to do, knight d2 and uh, white can resign. Uh, th there's no good way to counter uh, qu queen to f3 check. Uh, if you go for uh, for some sort of a checkmate, then queen f3 checking has to move, and this will be checkmate, and other moves uh, don't really help you. Like if you go queen to b7, it's just knight captures an f1, and okay, you've stopped knight f3 check, but you're just uh, lost here. You can't, re you can't recapture due to mate on d1. So really bad position. So after b5, rook to e1 was played, uh, and now comes rook to d2. Again, there are some moves uh, maybe you could consider here, like uh, queen h5 followed by rook to h4 going after the rook to h1 checkmate, which will be countered with something like g3 and bishop to e4 to cover the h1 square. Uh, or even b4 is very nice here. Uh, again, point being that if uh, you capture the knight to e3, just wins, the queen is attacked, uh, and also mate is being threatened. So b4, you know, just a nice uh, move to throw in uh, at all times. But okay, rook e1, rook to d2 was played by Anand, uh, also uh, not just with the idea of maybe harassing the queen, but going after that uh, f2 pawn uh, will be very nice. Maybe bishop to d4 can come next. So here, rook to a2, this is how Kramnik counters it. Rook to f1 was the other way to do it. Uh, and now rook back to d5. We have bishop to e4 now attacking the rook, rook to e5, as the rook on e1 is undefended. Rook a to e2 doubling up, and now queen to h4. Uh, rook to g5 is the other 
maybe potential move, but uh, the g2 pawn is nicely defended, so it's not really uh, that impressive. Queen to h4 was played, now trying to get rook h5 and maybe queen to h1 checkmate, but now pawn to g3, of course. Queen to h6 and now queen to d3. We have knight to d6, now putting pressure on the bishop, uh, bishop to d5, and rook captures on e2 finally. We have queen captures on e2 and now queen to h3. So this is the position. Uh, you have two pawns for uh, Kramnik and three pawns for Anand, but uh, Kramnik is up the exchange. He has a rook for a knight. Now, if Anand can uh, have his e7 pawn defended and, for example, uh, get this pawn to b4, which are dark squares, uh, and let's say the bishop on d6 controls both of those pawns, uh, as uh, Kramnik has a light square bishop, he's not really going to be able to uh, attack those pawns or the bishop. So it is fairly close to a draw but only if you can get uh, that uh, going. So bishop to e6, attacking the queen, queen back to h8, and now queen to f3. We have queen uh, to b8, now preparing to push the pawn, uh, king to g2, and pawn to b4. Now the pawn is very nicely placed on b4, and while black would very much enjoy pushing it to b3 and b2, uh, of course Kramnik made sure that the pawn never reaches the b3 square, as it is defended twice uh, on, on a light square. So rook to h1, uh, going maybe after some, uh, you know, uh, king side attacking ideas. Uh, you could also block the pawn with bishop to b3, but as it's defended, there's no rush. We have queen to b7, offering a queen trade, bishop to d5. For the moment, Kramnik declines the queen trade, queen to b5, and now uh, pawn to g4. Uh, we have knight to f7, and now a bishop back to b3. We have knight to h6. Another way to do it is knight to e5, but it's, uh, again, very tricky to figure out uh, what to do. And after queen to a8, going after queen to h8, you will have queen to c6 check, and uh, you just trade queens here. So that's uh, uh, one way to do it, but it's not... Uh, I mean, it's nothing uh, spectacular for black. So knight to h6 instead was played. Uh, rook to e1, and now queen to g5 putting pressure on the g4 pawn, rook to e4 defending and attacking on b4, and now knight to f5. Of course, you cannot capture the, the pawn as knight to uh, knight h4 check would win the white queen. So queen back to d1, and now knight to h4 with check, king to h3, and now queen to c5. Uh, so what can you do here? The, the pawn is defended, the f2 pawn is also being threatened, queen to e2, uh, just defending the f2 pawn. Pawn to g5 now, defending the knight here and putting everything on a dark square. Look at this. Oh, everything is nicely defended. Uh, is there is there a way for Kramnik to break through this? He, pl he plays queen to c4. And that's why maybe instead of this uh, g5 move, maybe some other moves could have been uh, considered, like maybe throwing in some checks first, but there's no good way to avoid queen to c4. So, okay, g5 was played, we have queen to c4, and now you kind of have to trade, you can't really allow queen to g8 check, so captures was played, rook captures, and now bishop back to c3. And now this is the position, same as we had before, only now the queens are off the board, and uh, still, how do you how do you attack those pawns on dark squares? Well, the only way that you could do it is if you maybe got your king a bit more active. Let's see if you can get your king to e6. Uh, Im Im imagine this was the position. This looks much more winnable than this. So that's kind of uh, what uh, uh, Vladimir will have to do. So rook to c5 was played going after the pawn. Knight f3 defending. We have king to g3 attacking the knight. Now knight to e5 again not allowing the captures. Uh, rook to b5 and now bishop back to d2 guarding the g5 pawn and the b4 pawn. Uh, we have pawn to f3 and now bishop back to c3 here. Uh, you should probably wait with this. You, you, uh, as long as the bishop is on d2, you're not just um, uh, guarding the g5 and b4 pawns. You're also preventing pawn to f4. So maybe here waiting with knight to c6 or uh, trying to just maybe repeat uh, would be the way to go. And also, of course, the knight can never be captured due to this check, uh, which would just uh, win material. So bishop to c3 was played. Uh, perhaps uh, un unnecessarily, and now pawn to f4. This allows Kramnik to uh, advance uh, forward a bit a bit faster. G captures, king captures, knight to f7, uh, and now rook to d5. And this is uh, one moment uh, before rook to d5 was made. Here in this position, 
uh, it's still uh, completely winning for uh, for Kramnik. But after rook to d5, he allows Anand this one sliver of hope if he manages to figure it out. He did not find it over the board, but maybe you guys will. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only move that saves the game for Anand while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that once rook d5 was played, the, the e6 uh, square was no longer under white's control. And pawn to e6 now uh, is the only way for black not to, not to lose this game. So pawn to e6, if played, uh, there's no way to uh, counter it. Rook to d7, okay, you're attacking the pawn once again, but now king f6 comes. And if rook to b7... Uh, w w what can you try? Bishop to d2 check, you're gonna chase the, the king back, bishop to e1 check, doesn't really matter, king f3, now even knight to e5 check, and after king to e2, bishop to c3, and okay, finally rook to b6 will happen, there's no way to avoid losing this pawn, but now king g5, and you you happily trade, bishop captures, uh, knight captures on g4, and this is a draw, even if you trade here, the rook of course will not be able to uh, defeat the bishop and pawn, as this is uh, unbreakable, the only way to break this is to actually capture the bishop with the rook, and then you'll get a draw by insufficient material, but after rook to d5, Anand did not play e6, uh, Anand played bishop back to b2, and now uh, Kramnik gains that one crucial tempo, king to f5, guarding the e6 square, uh, bishop to f6, and now rook to d1. Now it's, uh, again, uh, it is winning for white, but you have to figure out a, a way uh, th through black's defenses, and the only way to do that is to take it little by little and wait for black to uh, weaken his position. So knight to g5, now comes rook to d3. Knight back to f7, rook to d7. Uh, knight to d6, sorry, not knight to e5, knight to d6 with check, now comes king to f4. Uh, getting the king out of the way. If you go to e6, uh, okay, we said that if you get to e6, it's going to be great, but then you allow the black king to come to g5, and then once the g4 pawn ha hangs, that's uh, that's a draw. So king back to f4, played precisely by Kramnik, knight to f7, and now rook back to b7. We have bishop to e5 check, king to e3, and bishop to d6. Again, the bishop on the dark squares guards the pawns that are on the dark squares. King to e4, knight to g5 with check, king to f5, and now bishop to d5. Uh, sorry, knight to f3 first, uh, and now bishop to d5. Putting pressure on the knight, we have knight to h4 with check, and king to g5. Attacks the knight, knight to g6, and now rook to a7. Now the idea is uh, rook to a1, rook to f1, and rook to f7 check. If you can get that in, uh, of course you are winning. We have knight to f8, king to f5 now first, uh, bishop to c5, and now bishop uh, rook back to b7. Still waiting with this um, uh, maneuver as you've won, uh, uh, well, a, a lot of squares even without this maneuver, and you want to improve the position of your king and pawn before going for that. So the pawn will advance further. We have bishop to d6, pawn to g5 now. Knight back to g6, now rook back to a7. Again, with the same idea of rook to f1 to f7. Knight to f8, and now bishop back to b3. We have knight to g6, uh, rook to a8. Uh, still uh, playing a few moves, uh, winning uh, view, uh, winning some time. We have king to g4, uh, bishop to c7, and now king to h5. We have bishop to d6, and now rook to c8. Again, you could uh, remaneuver the rook this way. Uh, bishop to e5, and now rook to c5. Attacks the bishop, knight to g6 defending, and now rook to c8. Going after rook to g8, check. So knight to f8 and now rook back to c1. We have bishop to c3 and finally rook to f1 going after rook to f7 check. We have pawn to e6. Uh, uh, the, the, the pawn now finally advances. Uh, but that means it is no longer on a dark square and only the knight and king can defend it now. You can't use your, your bishop to just defend both of these pawns. Rook to d1. Uh, now comes king to f7 and rook to d8. We have knight back to g6 and now rook to d7 with check. King to e8 and now, of course, not moving the rook, bishop to a4. Threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. Uh, but Anand, once again, very resourceful, plays knight to e5. Uh, just attacks the rook and says, there are no good discoveries. My knight is defended by the bishop, my bishop is defended by the pawn. If you go after the pawn, I'll just defend it with my king. So how do you, how do you make progress here? Uh, rook to b7 with check. 
uh, asking the black king, where do you go now? If you go to the queen side, then the pawn marches forward. But if you go to the king side, which was played in the game, the pawn again marches forward. G6, we have knight to d3, uh, and now king to h6. Getting ready for that final pawn push, we have knight to c5. Uh, Anand being very tricky here as the uh, bishop is un uh, undefended here. And now rook to b8 with check, king to e7, and now uh, bishop back to c2. Of course, you don't want to advance the pawn, then the bishop just captures it and the uh, knight captures the bishop. So bishop to c2 was played, we have knight to d7, and now rook to b7. Pinning the knight here, king to d6, unpinning, and now pawn to g7. And that's it, there's no more... Uh, no, no more tricks to try here. Bishop captures and g7 check was played. Uh, Kramnik recaptured and he was in this position. And move 101 uh, that Vishwanathan Anand resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So a remarkable game where... Uh, the the uh, Anand employs the Grunfeld defense. Uh, Kramni goes for that uh, wild uh, uh, pawn sacrifice, and then even a two pawn sacrifice for for some activity. And uh, in, in the end, he manages to um, uh, get out uh, on top. So if if you struggle with the Grunfeld, you know maybe maybe you can try this. Maybe it works out well for you. Uh, but also, if you uh, play the Grunfeld and you face this with White, you will have some ideas of maybe how to uh, how to approach it a little bit better. So yeah, yeah, Kasparov tried the same line against Kramnik, like I said, in, in uh, uh, 1998 in Linares, uh, but their game ended in a draw. Uh, so these were, these are the three victories that Kramnik had in this um, Dos Hermanas tournament of 1996 against uh, uh, Anand, against uh, Kasparov, uh, and the previous one against uh, Vasily Vanchuk. So three of the three of the biggest fish in the pool. Uh, and um, uh, due to this loss, Anand also, like Kasparov, finishes on five and a half out of nine, uh, trailing half point behind Veselin Topalov and Vladimir Kramnik. Uh, and uh, yeah, you resign this, uh, of course, uh, you're down a full rook. There's no point in playing this. Okay, you do have pawns, but there's no way to actually make something of the pawns. I mean, this uh, the, this pawn falls on the next move, and uh, th th that's pretty much it. You can't play king c5 or the knight hangs. Uh, no, no counterplay here. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I will probably cover a few more games from this tournament as it is a very nice one. We'll also check. I don't think I've ever checked out on any games Topalov played in this tournament. And even though Anand had five and a half, uh, also the, the same as Kasparov, Anand is the only one who got four wins in this tournament. Other, you know, got uh, three at the most. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Welsh fan uh, Wang Siwan, uh, Sasha Widler, Mark Henley Brennan, and Michael Mails for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.